so um, I like to think about, and we like to talk about lineage in terms of sources, targets, and transformations, right? So the most easiest way to think about this is you've got, you know, one data system as a source and another data system as a target, right? So there, you can talk about lineage between data systems. These two systems, there's data that flows between them, but the real lineage is between some sort of set of objects over here, columns on a table or whatever, that are being mapped to, that are being moved to uh, an object on, on this side, okay? Um, and then in between, there's some, there, there could be some sort of transformation, right? Maybe that's a translate or a, or a data substitution or a concatenate or, or whatever it might be. There's all sorts of sets of, sets of things. So this is the general thing. But the main thing is to look at, we have a source going to a target. The data is moving between some sort of object and another, right? So that's one representation. So here's another one where the target is not a data system, but it's a report, all right? So in, in our world, when we talk about that, you can get a little bit picky, and we'll talk about the pickiness later. But you know, if you're looking at a dashboard on a, on a website or you know, a piece of paper that has a, a number on it, you know, some report, it, it, we're not really talking about a data system at this point. We're not talking about some physical, tangible um, target data object. What we're really talking about in terms of targets in, in this um, sort of lineage is a, is a definition, all right? So there's an item on this report that is, you know, student uh, retention rate or last name or whatever, right? And, and so the target there is that you're, you're pointing this sort of abstract thing, which is, a, which is a definition on a report or a column on a report. That, um, now, as we'll see in a second, some, some people can talk about reports in terms of like uh, spreadsheets or CSVs or flat files and things like that. And that is also a form. Um, we'll talk about the distinction between those. But it's important as we go into the cookbook to understand um, when we're doing mappings and we're doing lineage, are we talking about going from a data system object to a data system object? Are we talking about going to a data system object to a more intangible sort of definition, you know, pull? But still we have sources and, and, and targets. So let's look at a sort of more complicated infrastructure here. So you've got a data system, one that's flowing, you know, where there's data that's flowing between them, uh, that's then getting pushed to a report, all right? Uh, you might also have uh, your application. This is like some, you know, old banner UI data entry, right? So there's a data entry form here that, that gets loaded into your data system. So sometimes when people talk about lineage, they want to trace things all the way back. So they're saying, I'm looking at a report that says right now that I've got, um, you know, 150 students in my uh, Spanish program, right? So how I want to be able to trace that back, and Adam, it's in my data warehouse, okay? But that came over from Banner, all right? And that those the data field in here was had data entry from this particular screen on an application, right? which is an interesting bit of information, right? So uh, some people think are able to trace the lineage all the way back, but here we have one, two, three hops, right? There's another thing that might happen is that rather than having this data flow straight, like from a flat file straight into your data warehouse, I mean, from your banner system straight into a data warehouse, oftentimes it's getting loaded into uh, some sort of transport, right? Staging table or a, a flat file in this case. Right, so we call these protocol data systems in the cookbook, right? And and what we mean by that is it's it's, it's really it, in in lots of ways in terms of a spec or an ETL it doesn't behave any different than a database. It's but it's it's um you know it's it's temporary, it's transient. So so there is a mapping, an extract from data system one into that CSV format, and then there's another one from the CSV staging file into your 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 data system two. All right. So, um, but you can represent this in your knowledge base like a, you know, like a data system in terms of a target with data fields and objects. All right, so that's a little bit, uh, a little bit of a, of a new thing to think about, but um, we'll, um, we'll go over that a bit more when we go in the cookbook. Um, if you've ever built mapping documents for um, ETLs, uh, it, one mistake that people make is they'll do a mapping straight from one system to the other and, and you know, ignore the fact that they've got an intermediate step, and it's best if you can sort of map from this to the intermediate and this to the other. So thinking of this as actually a source or a target data system helps. Um, another type of, of protocol system can be an API that loads data. So you might have a web service over here or some other uh, process with which 
you have a, a set of, of fields or, or, or columns and, 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 and the objects of that web service that then gets imported in to the, to the data system. Right? So there's some complexity in how you want to trace back the trace back lineage and see how things flow. And it's important to understand all those, those, those pieces. Um, all right, uh, moving on. So this is another good thing to understand about lineage. Right, so lineage is created by a process, all right? So as you think about it, like what, what is it that makes data move from here to here? Well, there's some extract, right? And then there's some load here, okay? That is an actual process. It's not, it doesn't magically move, right? So these are, these are systems and these are processes, right? Um, so uh, the movement between systems is done by some sort of process. So the process examples are, you know, an extra, extract, transform, and load, like a standard ETL, Pull. Uh, a report can be a process. Um, a query, which is sort of a form of report. Some people use queries to do flat files. An API load, as we already saw, or data entry could also qualify as as, a, as some sort of process. And you're coming from some form in, on, a, on a site into uh, in your application. Now, what's good as as cookbook clients or as, as a knowledge base, you know, if you're thinking about what, what your data um, deliverables are on your campus, that that for us, like these things represent specs in the data cookbook. So if I have a, you know, someone has a request to build an ETL or to build a report, right, that becomes a spec and you document this process. Specs are processes in the, in the cookbook. So you document that and then, you know, then it gets built and then you have now this documentation of that, of that process in the cookbook. So what that means is that the lineage, the, the, the documentation of the lineage between these two systems exists within the processes that move them, right? That's not all that crazy. Most people who, you know, have documentation of their lineage currently have it buried in their SSIS packages or in their actual query. So if they want to go back and look, they have to go look at the processes and deconstruct the code to figure out how things, things flow. So if you can figure out how to put that information into a specification or documentation of that process, um, it'll, it'll help you um, visualize and, and elevate that information. All right, so here's some examples of what we call the mappings, right? So these are lineages um, uh, flowing between systems. So here's, uh, and I apologize to non-Banner clients, we just happen to have Banner in our, in our uh, demo system here, um, and Banner has like the worst names <laughs> of tables and fields. But so here we have a source, it's this Serdap term code and it's kind of truncated. It's going through some translate uh, and it's a term code emit and it's loaded into this target uh, data system, which as we'll see later is a, is a data warehouse system where they've got um, a, a, a data field called admit term and we've got sort of a definition of that called admit term. So that's a pretty straightforward move from one data system object into another data system object. In, another, in a different target data system with the translation that might happen. So we want to tr translate the emit code to something. Um, here's one that's a little more complicated. So this is loading ex uh, admissions accepted date and it's pulling things from the Sorrel Core start date and the Sorrel Core admit code. I can never figure out how to pronounce that word. Um, and what that's basically saying, like, you know, if the admit code is admitted, then the start date, you know, moves it over to this accepted date, okay? So it's two sources flowing into one target, right? And then here's another example. It's got a little sort of like ad source, but it's the uh, admit code with the definition here going uh, for of an admitted student, right? So you can count the number of people who have an admit code equal to, and that's what the, you'll see there's a function that says admit code equal to, you know, admit, uh, it becomes this accepted count or accepted. Um, so that's a straight pull. Now, so what's interesting here is that these two things, Things, circle admit code and circle cur admit code are the same object. Um, and so this is uh, our best practice uh, in terms of how we've designed things is that um, you can, going from source to target, if you're trying to map out a lineage, it is um, fine to have multiple sources that move into a single target, but we don't recommend having single sources that move into multiple targets. If you've got and like in this case, this field does end up populating two different places with some transformation. It's just two different, it's two different lineages, right? That both have that same source. Um, so I would encourage you to think that way. It's sort of broken down for us based on our best practices. That makes sense is to talk about 
um, if you're doing mappings, that if you can have multiple sources go into one uh, target, uh, and that works well with the functions and, and manipulations on that. Um, all right, so let's let's do some definitions. So we we define a mapping. A mapping is a set of lineages, right? So a mapping is you know, here's a process that has a whole, like, you know, we're moving this whole table over this whole table or these two tables into this one table or CSV or something. So a mapping is just like set of lineages. Uh, a lineage connects one or more source data objects to a single target data object. And as I already said, we don't recommend multiple targets to one lineage. It doesn't, you can do it. It just, you have to sort of decide one way or the other or it gets complicated if you love both. And then a lineo is, uh, something that connects one or more data, source data objects to a single definition uh, with no physical data system target. So uh, this Alinea is a word that we made up. Um, so it is, a, um, and this can, the this concept of this is that this becomes uh, a default source mapping for any target that shares that definition, right? So coming from one source system, if I'm pulling out formatted name, I know that it's got this field and this field and this field and that it's, and, and it goes through some sort of concatenation and then becomes this thing called a formatted name, all right? So that can be used on a report where the output is just, a, you know, as a definition, it's not going to target data system, but could also be used where I'm actually sending formatted name to a extract file or a, or a data warehouse. Um, so what is a lineo in, 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 in our terminology? It's, a, it's, it's part of a lineage. It's the source and transformation part of a lineage without the target. Uh, it is also another way to document a technical definition. All right, so this, for those of you who are not data cookbook clients, uh, you maybe don't have a lot of exposure to it, but in the data dictionary, we have functional definitions and then de technical definitions. And the functional definition might be formatted name and then it was some English language description, the formatted name is first name and last name and a comma, blah, 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 blah. And then um, the technical definition says it, you can have multiple per system. So I've got one for um, Banner and for my uh, CRM and all, and wherever I'm pulling data from. Uh, and the technical definition is how you, it's, it's a narrative place where you can fill in how you pull that, how you pull that data to match the definition. So, you know, it might be select, you know, with some sort of concatenated value, or you might in English write out what it is, or you might explain that there's some procedure you call, right? A lineo is a version of that that's more spec-based, right? So here's this example. So you might have a technical definition, and I think this is for, this is also for admit term, where it says, you know, pull the term code entry for any student, blah, 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 blah. That's a narrative version. And the lineo is what we saw here, where it's pulling from these two, you know, the admit code and the term code and going through this function. And I, this screenshot sort of doesn't show the hover over that happens here. But notice there's no target here. So this is just, you know, if, if I'm putting any, if, if it's used on a report, it's going to come out that way. If it's going to be dropped into some other mapping, it'll, it'll, it'll show. So it's just, it, it, and you can do one or the other or both of these uh, to, and they, and they should sort of represent the same thing or they could augment each other in terms of documentation. But having a lineo sort of helps you um, have a, a more spec-based reusable portion of your, of your um, technical definitions and helps to build up the lineage. Um, all right, so um, that is, uh, that's some pretty deep stuff talking about lineos with new new words that I did invent it, but um, hopefully it catches on. Um, now let's talk about the overall process uh, and, and specification. So this is a specification for a uh, something that we'd actually with a client uh, or sample of it, uh, where we were mapping from a banner database to Helio Campus, who's a um, a data warehouse vendor um, with a package analytics. So uh, this is a spec for an ETL process, right? And uh, you'll see it's a sort of the, the, the spec that documents that process. Um, in here, we have a mapping tab. There's an overview tab that sort of explains what it is, and, and we'll get to some of these others. And in the mapping tab, we have a target data system, okay, which in this case is the Helio Campus Data Warehouse, and a source data system, which is the My ERP system, which is actually Banner in this example. Um, then we have three lineages on this mapping. Right, where we're pulling, sort of showing how we're pulling the data out, um, and then this this target um, item here has a definition associated to it for admit term, and uh, you know I'm going to go back a minute 
this is actually the lineo that's associated with admit term. So if I go back in here and I say that we've got th this target system has popped in and the, um, that's, sorry, that's the lineo for admit term at a banner, right? Because banner is the source system or my ERP system is the source system in this case, that's what we call it. Uh, this is the lineo and it gets sort of defaulted in. Um, of course, it's actually different in this example, but that's a whole separate point. But anyway, the, the lineo is the, the data that pulls this uh, information pulls this out. Um, so that hopefully helps you explain sort of what the what the pieces of of, of this are. Um, so if you're documenting uh, an ETL process, it's really good to start with that mapping and show how things flow. But there are some limitations to what you can put in sort of an object to object mapping, uh, and so I want to talk about that because you can make yourself kind of crazy trying to document everything when you're talking about just these individual lineages. Because really, if you're doing a process that's an extract, you're dealing with them in one primary process, right? So um, it can be difficult to track sort of the full details of a lineage when only looking at the object to object. Um, the overall process may contain additional complexity and logic. Like there might be overall selection criteria for, for selecting everything that's going to get flowing. Or there's multiple table joins that are happening that's, that's hard to put on an object level. Or there's filters. Uh, that are either happening because of the joins or because of the selection criteria or other things, or conditional logic that, that's happening um, that, again, applies to the whole table or selection of the items. Uh, so to fully understand the lineage, you really need to understand the, the um, you need to look at the mappings and the overall process, functional and technical details, right? Um, so don't, and, and don't make yourself crazy trying to, to make sure that you have this encapsulated within the point-to-point -point information everything you would need to know about how it goes because it's hard to capture the fact that it's part of a larger query or larger filters or other things so um, that's why it's important to know like here here is this point-to-point -point lineage but it's part of this process it is getting generated by this ETL process um, so if you go back into this mapping we have this like technical tab up here right and that's where there's information about um, the actual query and selection criteria and the uh, the, the sort and other things that might matter at a, at a system level. 